What's up guys, GT here and welcome back to another installment of Dial It In where we take an amp model from the AxeFX2 and dial in a good sort of usable tone. In this episode, we'll be dialing in the Bogner Ecstasy Amp model or the Euro model as it's called in the AxeFX2. Now before we begin, keep in mind that this is the way that I would dial in the amp, obviously based on your gear and your situation or your style of playing, your settings might be slightly different. So hopefully this video will get you started in the right direction and then you can take it from there. So without further ado, let's jump into Axe Edit and let's dial it in. All right guys, so I've got Axe Edit loaded in front of me and as always, uh, if you follow most of my videos, I start with a blank preset and we build things up from there. I am playing my Ernie Ball Music Man JP15. I am playing the regular slinky strings on there by Ernie Ball. I am on the bridge pickup, volumes at full and tones at full. This is how it sounds. All right, so that's pretty much the DI signal of my guitar. So let's get started. Let's start dialing in block by block. The first block we're gonna do is obviously the amp block and the cap block. Now, as I mentioned, we're dialing in the Bogner Ecstasy model, which transforms to the Euro model here in the AxeFX2. Now the Bogner Ecstasy comes in two flavors in the AxeFX2 which is basically Euro Vintage or Euro Modern. I'm gonna stick with the Euro Vintage models, which are called the Euro models, to be honest, in the AxeFX2. So let's go ahead and do that. The Euro model comes in two flavors again, uh, the Euro Blue and the Euro Red. The Euro Red is the one which has more gain, so I'm gonna pretty much use that. It is more helpful in creating lead sort of tones. So let's start with the Euro Red model. Uh, for the cab, the cab that you can choose pretty much is anything, any IR which has a vintage 30 sort of a speaker setup or G12 H or G12 M as well would work really well so in my case I always like the vintage 30 sort of speakers and the vintage 30 cabs in the AxeFX2 so we're going to choose that so let's go ahead and select the cab now I'm going to change this to stereo ultra res I chose two cabs in this situation um, you know let's go ahead and turn off the link the first cap that I'm going to choose is the F074 one of my favorite caps this is a Mesa traditional 4x12 rectifier cabinet uh, with you know vintage 30 speakers so I'm going to select that for the second cap you can pretty much choose a Bogner cap which is available here in the AxeFX2 the first one being F051 I actually went with F052 which is an Uber T75 plus V30 sort of a setup uh, this is again a 4x12 cap I'm not gonna mic anything up uh, let's leave everything at stock uh, and let's hear how this is sounding <laughs> Now, the first impression that you'll get with everything at stock is that it kind of sounds really dark. And that's the first impression that most people get when dialing in this uh, amplifier, to be honest. And to be honest, it's not really a dark amp. It's really how you dial it in. So there are some tips and tricks. I hope I can tell you some of them while I'm dialing in the amp. So let's go ahead and start tweaking stuff and let's start tweaking the amp to make it sound uh, much more pleasant sounding to be honest <laughs> so the first things first this amp has a lot of drive so you can you know push it up but i'm going to keep it at stock right now let's keep it at five we'll come back to that in a minute for the bass it sounded quite boomy to me so i'm going to bring down the bass to around 3.1 somewhere like that so you know again tweak it based on your gear but for me i think three works well mid i'm going to keep it at five we're looking for a fat sort of a smooth lead tone so i'm going to keep the mid at five the treble is the trickiest one in my opinion for this amp you see at noon this pretty much equates to having the treble at one on a Marshall amp so you want to really push it up and you know don't feel shy to push it up to even nine if you have to I think we as humans feel that something's going not very right if we have to push the amp or uh, all the way up or push a knob all the way up to be honest but in this case don't feel shy push it up in my case I think 8.5 works really well you can even go up to nine if you want to bright i didn't touch at all bright switches off uh presence is again another knob which can add a lot of brightness to your tone and bring up that top end that you need so for me 
I think around seven works really well. Uh, depth, I brought it down to zero because again, it was getting a little too boomy for me. Master volume again is slightly tricky as with most amps, you know, it starts up, uh, it loads up at default as four and there's a reason why. If you push it up to 10, I think it sounds you know more flubby to my ears and it kind of loses character so i think around five sounds really really good to my ears so let's keep it there for the cab uh i did not mic anything up uh all i did is went into the advanced section and boosted up the low cut to around 90 hertz this is going to tame some of that top end, uh, low end and for the high cut i brought it down to around 7700 as i said i'm looking for a slightly sort of a smooth fat sort of a tone um with that done, let's hear how this is sounding now. I think that sounds really much better in terms of a tone now, because if you hear the previous uh, instance where I played when we had everything at stock it sounded quite dark and quite boomy and quite muddy but now I think the amp is kind of coming out of its character and sounding much much better all right next thing we're going to add is a delay and reverb now we're dialing in a solo tone obviously we at least should have some delay or some reverb I will usually like to go ahead with and dial in both so let's go ahead and dial in a delay uh, my favorite delay is a ping pong, uh, you know, Petrucci being one of my favorite guitar players. He uses ping pong quite a lot, so I'm heavily influenced by that. Tempo, I'm going to set it to around one eighth of a dot, which is 120 BPM. In this case, the tempo is set to 120 BPM, which is the tempo of the backing track, which was uh, you heard in the beginning of this video. By the way, how good is that backing track? You know, please go ahead and do check it out. Uh, the link is in the description box below. Feedback, I pushed it up to around 35%. This gives me a fair number of repeats, which I'm looking for. Uh, spread, I brought it down to around 75%. This determines how wide your delay repeats are gonna spread between your speakers. I kind of like it around 75%. The other thing that I really like to do always is go into the EQ section and bring down the high cut. This kind of allows your delay repeats to not interfere too much with your playing. So I brought it down to around 3200 in this case. Mix, I think I pushed it up to around 16%. Not too much delay happening in there, but you know, with the no amount of feedback that we have, it should fairly give us good amount of repeats and make it sound really nice. The next thing I added is the reverb. So uh, I'm gonna add it in parallel over here. Feel free to add it in series as well. It's totally a taste sort of a thing. For me, I dialed in the reverb usually with the London plate setting that you know reverb works really well for me but for this video i want to try something different we're going to go ahead with medium hall in this case i'm going to change the quality to high which is always what i do i pretty much keep everything at stock unless i need to have more reverb then i push up the time but for this video i'm going to pretty much keep it at stock and the mix i'm going to push it up to 100 percent because we are in parallel and obviously i should connect it up now and for the level is something which you can, you know, adjust based on your taste. Always keep the mix at 100% because you are running in parallel and not in series. The level for me, I think minus 10 dB kind of works really well. So something around that kind of gives me a good sort of a setting. Again, this is purely based on taste. You know, feel free to change it as per your settings. And obviously now we've added something in parallel. So our level is going to shoot up. So I'm going to bring down the level of the amp to around minus 15 so that we don't get any peaking. Now with that done, this is how we are sounding. <laughs> That sounds really nice, but I think we're lacking some gain. So as I said, we're gonna come back to the gain in a minute. So here we are, we're gonna decide what we need to do about the gain. So you can push up the gain of the uh, amp and push up the input drive, but that will obviously bring along a bit of saturation and you know, from it brings around a bit of fizz for me, but you know, you can push it up. There's no hard and fast rule to not push it up. What I usually like to do is add a drive pedal in the front to kind of boost the amp. So what we're gonna do is use the drive pedal here. We're gonna change it to T808OD, which is a tube screamer, sort of a drive pedal. 
uh, the drive I'm not gonna have too much drive because as I said the amp already has quite a bit of drive uh, keep the drive at around three and the level I'm gonna push it all the way up so with that done this is how it sounds now I think that sounds really really good to my ears and hopefully you guys like the tone as well one final thing that i did and you pretty much heard it in the playthrough in the beginning is that i added some harmonies to the guitar which is something pretty much optional to do you might not need to do it in your case but i'm going to show you how to do that anyways so how did i get the harmonies that you heard in the playthrough i got that using a pitch block so let's go ahead and add that what we're going to do is select the intelligent harmony kind of effect type from the pitch block and obviously I should connect it up first. Now let's go ahead and tweak this. So I just dialed in the third harmony which is third interval from the root note which is we are in the F sharp minor Aeolian minor key so what I'm going to do is choose the voice one harmony as three. Uh, mix I'm going to push it up to 100% and obviously because we are in parallel and for the level, you can tweak it as per your taste again. So for me, I went ahead with minus one dB. And for the key and scale, this is where you would need to set in your uh, you know, key of the track that you're playing along with. So for me, it was, as I said, it was an F sharp Aeolian minor kind of a backing track. So what I did is choose G flat over here, which is pretty much same as F sharp. And I'm gonna choose the Aeolian minor scale over here these settings don't matter unless you select the custom scale to be honest so we're gonna leave everything over there untouched so with that done this is how it sounds now sounds nice right but you know it sounded a little too perfect to my ears to be honest so what you can do to make it slightly imperfect because when you do you know harmonies in real life you usually do two separate takes and you might have a little bit of human latency coming in in your playing so for the harmony what i did is i pushed up the delay now this is a very minor uh tweak to get in that some sort of imperfection to be honest because otherwise it just sounds too spot on to my ears to be honest so with that done this is how it sounds I think that sounds really good to my ears all right so that's it that's how i would dial in this amp model and hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and enjoyed dialing in the tone along with me as always make sure you give this video a thumbs up and in case you aren't subscribed please go ahead and do so it does really help me out as a creator and as always until i see you guys in the next video make sure you stay safe and keep rocking guys cheers Bye bye.